Okay, um, so last speaker. So I'm, I'll try to make this a quick one so that you can enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Um, okay, so introduction to Stack Driver. Um, okay, so a few things. Uh, I'm just going to like quickly go run through like this whole set of features that Stack Driver kind of offer. Uh, one feature that I miss out here is the tracer. I couldn't get it working yesterday, so um, just bear with me. Um, I'll just go through the ones that I managed to have some sort of working-ish demo. Okay, um, so uh, let's go through the situation. The old situation is um, we are going to try to deploy a Golang web application, and this is to be deployed to Google Compute Engine. Uh, just to uh, make, uh, just to have some context on like what we are trying to do here. So uh, for this simple uh, Golang web application. Um, the main important thing would be uh, this application routes. Um, the rest of it is just um, stupid logic, just returns a JSON object. If you want, you can check the code, uh, code base there. Um, it's on GitHub. Uh, but what we're going to try to look at is uh, this whole set of routes here. So we have the index route um, info, which basically spits out uh, an info log. A warning, a warning log, error, error log, and then you have one which is stack, which uh, dumps out a stack trace uh, that is needed for later. Okay, so how do we get logging started with uh, with this uh, web application of Google Compute Engine? Install the agent, and that's kind of it. So um, the nice thing about Google uh, uh, this stack driver is that when you install the agent. It comes with a whole bunch of um, pre-configured um, settings. So um, if you want, you can uh, you can go to this website here, and then you can see a whole bunch of like what they provide. So the moment you install the logging agent, it comes with all these things all enabled. So let's say you install Nginx. Oh, it's already there already. Like it can pick it up. It will send it to Google. Uh, uh, this uh, stack driver logging. So what we want to focus here is syslog. So let's say in our case where it's a web application, uh, web application, right? We, we usually want to uh, manage it via uh, system control. So um, so that you can do uh, a bit of a fancier stuff like that. Hold on, let me SSH in. Okay, okay, so using system control, you will have this generic web application here, and then you can see everything that is controlled by here. So um, all the logs are actually dumped into this uh, other um, daemon called uh, journal. So if you want to see the full set of logs, yeah. So basically, if you want, you can, uh, you can uh, like, is this a Linux thing? So, but this kind of uh, matters to us. So, um, so how do we get all these logs to Stackdriver? Because like by default, right? Um, uh, when I say just now, where it works, right? Um, what will happen is these logs get dumped into this um, syslog file, syslog uh, file, and that gets picked up, uh, that get picked up and dumped into Stackdriver. So let me quickly show you the logs for here. If you go here, you go to logging. And if you go to instance, if you go to the syslog, these are all the, oh. Um, syslog contains a whole bunch of rubbish because it contains all the processes on the machine. So what, if we, if we, what we can do is if we run this thing here, Curl local host. It, 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 it. Okay, so basically what it's doing right now is it's picking uh, the generic web application service with a, uh, on the index path constantly every two seconds. And then we should be able to see some logs here. So you see at the bottom here, like the logs are actually streaming in. So basically, let's say if you're debugging something, you can just like wait, uh, change your application, uh, upload it, and then you just wait for the logs to come up. Okay. But if you see here, right, um, if you see the syslog here, um, 
the main problem with this syslog is that if you try to filter it, let's say if I want uh, debug logs only, and uh, or okay, let's say info logs. You see, if we, if you look at this log down here, if you uh, let me click, okay, if you look at this log down here, I put severity info, which in, uh, which kind of implies that this is an info log. If I try to um, filter for info log, you'll see that there's, there's no log. Like, why why is that happening? So the reason is because uh, we are not tagging it properly and Google is not picking it up and you kind of have to follow Google's rules uh, to be able to use their tooling. Yeah, so this is what I just mentioned. Um, the default log is at any log level, like you can't use the filtering that is uh, natively provided. So um, so back to the, doc if you go back to the documentation, there is mention about uh, JSON logging, which if you uh, if you play around with the ELK stack as well, um, uh, they also mention the stuff about JSON logging where you pass logs as JSON and these JSON logs get um, um, inserted into these um, tools and then they'll get passed accordingly. So in our case, right, let's say if we have a JSON log, uh, let me quickly show you an example of a JSON log. Let's say we have this example JSON log um, if let's say if I pass the severity uh, as info, uh, what actually happens if you, uh, if it get it get detected by JSON is that it gets uh, Google will be able to detect it, and then um, that will show up on the logging set driver interface. So let me quickly show you. Like uh, in order to make this happen, you have to add this configuration um, to the Google um, logging agent. So once you add this, uh, this uh, configuration, then that should work. So the first part is essentially read logs from system control or journaldy uh, in, in our case. And then after that, uh, do some message passing or um, log massaging to take out um, this field called message and then um, pass it as JSON essentially. So if we do that, essentially, um, oh yeah, and another one more point that I want to mention is that we want to tag the logs coming out from the generic web application as generic web application. So if you tag it accordingly, um, if we change it to, change this to any log label first, and then turn it off, we turn on generic web application, you'll see all these logs, and all these are info, can actually now filter it by info. Okay, but let's say um, if you don't want info, let's say if you want to make it error instead. So essentially, it will return nothing. Uh, I mean, the, the program kind of returns nothing. But let's say, uh, but in our case, uh, we can filter that out. Oh. Yeah, it'll take a while for the error logs to come in. Come in, come in. Okay, there you go. So the logs are now coming in. Um, yeah, and then there's set, set traces and all. Okay, so that's logging in general. Um, any questions so far? So okay. you need to rewrite actual as, as a log to be able to start driver to pick it up properly, correct? Uh, so the question is you need to rewrite, rewrite the log in order for stack driver to like comprehend it, right? Uh, that's kind of correct. Um, so one way is you pass it as JSON, and then you follow the rules of engagement, which is this this uh, this page here. Uh, you can find it in the documentation, and then it gets uh, picked up automatically, or you can manually play around with the Fluentd configuration until it works, which is very very painful. Um, yeah. So essentially, that's uh, essentially like programming Ruby down the line, playing around with all this uh, syntax and all. So it's kind of tough. Okay. Um, so so now with all that logging in place, right? Um, what can we do with it? So essentially, um, the whole point of logs is so to understand your application. But let's say your application is stable, and what you want now, um, let's say some PM comes to you and say, okay, I want to find out whether this feature that your generic web application have uh, is being used in the first place. So what can we do here? 
in our case, right, um, we have uh, at least Google Cloud has this thing uh, where exports, which essentially, which essentially you can export your logs out to other services. So let's say we create uh, export. You can send your logs to like BigQuery, uh, Google Cloud Storage, or Google Pub Sub, and then from then on, you can play around with other services. So um, in our case, um, I've already exported the logs out already um, to BigQuery. So if we go up to BigQuery, where is BigQuery? Okay, BigQuery. So those same logs um, in this project. So the logs will be here. Generic web application, um, today's date. So the logs, like after you created an export, um, the logs will automatically be streamed into this uh, table and then you can like run queries on top of it. Which is a pretty nice feature. Um, so in our, uh, in let's say, let's say if we take this uh, query and then we dump it into BigQuery here and just change the date to today's date. So this query is basically um, trying to get the number of times the start index handler is being called. So in order to make it more exciting, I guess, um, we'll continue calling it every two seconds. So that means if I run the query multiple times, you should get a different number. So right now, um, on the first, uh, first time I run this query, you get 109. And then if I rerun again, it should get a, hopefully a different number. There you go. So basically, the logs are being streamed from your application on VM to stack driver logging, and then it gets streamed down to BigQuery where you can perform more analysis on it. So let's say now the PM says, okay, uh, is the index handler being used in the first place? Yeah, it's being used. There's 112 calls to it. Building on, on top of this BigQuery, um, because it's BigQuery, you can actually build dashboards on top of it. So there's this service that uh, I think was mentioned just now a couple of times called Google Data Studio. So you can create a new report, and then you can hook up Data Studio to uh, this uh, BigQuery. So let me create a new data source. We'll go BigQuery, where are you? BigQuery, where is? Okay, here you go. So in our case, we will go demo project, generic web logs. Okay, and then we can just log data. Log data, connect this. And now essentially with all these fields in place, we can now create dashboards on top of our logs. So it's from VM to Stack Driver logging to BigQuery, and then now to Data Studio. And then uh, let me quickly create a new uh, scorecard. I create a scorecard, and essentially we do a record count. We'll do a record count of uh, JSON message of the uh, of the uh, JSON message payload, which contains index handler, uh, start index handler, which is basically is the same query as just now. Um, if you think about it, and oh, okay, maybe I did that wrongly. Uh, but okay, that's besides the point. Uh, it shows uh, how all these systems can be connected together. And at the final, uh, at the final point, uh, in order to show the the performance uh, of your application or anything, you can do this. Yeah, you got a question? Uh, is there any way to send up directly to BigQuery without going to Stack Driver? Um, so the question is whether you can send the logs directly to BigQuery without going through Stack Driver. I believe it's possible. The BigQuery has an API, so you can just upload your log data. Uh, but essentially, you, have, you yourself have to do the passing by your, on your end. Yeah, like maybe if you upload it as JSON, uh, a BigQuery API 
accepts JSON, then yeah, that's possible. But I mean, uh, you can go the other way where you know it gets seen on the logging where all the logs get centralized. That'll be more convenient for everyone, I guess. But it depends on your use case. Okay, so um, seeing that this doesn't work as expected, maybe I configured something wrongly. Um, let's proceed on. Um, okay, Data Studio. Okay, so the next part is getting started with error reporting. So if you see on, you go back to um, our demo project. Okay, so you see, uh, we started seeing spikes here. So if you see under stack driver, there is this other thing called error reporting. So error reporting kind of builds on the idea of logging, where if you have stack traces within your logs, it, that gets picked up automatically, and you can visualize it here. So just now, if you see in the logs, there was a stack trace, right? So now you can see, like, okay, now I have an error here, which I'm supposed to handle. Um, and then this scene where, when is last seen, that kind of stuff. So in our case, maybe, um, yeah, we've seen this, then we acknowledge it, that, it, that it's here, and then we can put our own um, issue, ticket, uh, issue, issue ticket to say that we are maybe working on it and that kind of stuff. So this is basically a UI interface uh, for your error, for your error logs, for your error in your application. So it is more of like a convenience feature, like it's a nice to have rather than a, um, rather than something that you particularly need. Okay, so next one. Um, monitoring. Monitoring is the next piece of the puzzle you know, to understanding your application performance. So for monitoring agent, it's kind of the same thing as logging agent. Uh, you can install the monitoring agent and then you can get going with it. Uh, the monitoring agent comes with a whole bunch of like stuff that's auto, um, there's opto opt-in for you, like you know, node health and that kind of stuff. So in you know, let's go to stack driver monitoring. So you probably should have seen this uh, interface just now. Okay. Okay. So for monitoring. Um, all we want to do is, like, let's say, because we have only one instance in our case, so we can just go and dive in, and then we can see, like, you know, what what we have. Um, so over here, the new stack driver interface apparently now it contains like information on like um, the stack driver agent and like what's happening with it, and then you can see well, what does the agent provide. So in our case, it provides like CPU usage, CPU load. Um, I think the more important one is memory usage. Um, like uh, just a quick uh, side note, uh, side, uh, side story I guess. So um, last week, uh, my team kind of discovered how important like memory usage was. Like apparently, um, if memory usage keep climbing nonstop for two or three weeks, that kind of means uh, memory leak. And then you have to like do a whole bunch of investigation just to get, um, just to get it resolved. So essentially, we didn't we didn't really see this in uh, we didn't really like. Uh, see our dashboards for quite a while, and apparently our applications kept crashing every two weeks. So that's a kind of a interesting story. <coughs> so yeah, so with this monitoring agent, um, you get a whole bunch of uh, metrics which you can monitor and understand the health of your application as well as your machine. But uh, and with all um, monitoring um, agents out there, we are similar to all monitoring agent solutions out there. You can also send in your custom metrics. Uh, you just have to program, uh, use your, your programming SDKs to get that working. So I won't show that here because um, I couldn't get that working for me. So yeah. So that's kind of mon uh, monitoring uh, as, a, as a GIS. But there's other stuff within it where, where it's kind of uh, useful. So in our case, let's say, um, if you uh, if you watch or you heard of this stuff called uh, on SRE and stuff, uh, you kind of uh, you can kind of realize about the importance of having your application to be up as long as possible, because like if your application down, you can't serve your users. So essentially, what you can do from here uh, on Stack Driver as kind of a convenience thing is you can create this thing called uptime checks. So you can um, in our case, let's say if you want to run an uptime check. 
on our application, what I can do is um, run uh, time check on generic web application, and then uh, you can take in. Uh, you can just configure everything from here. <coughs> so, let's say in our case, um, we want to get the URL for our instance uh, for our application, which is this IP address. Um, the index path, and then check every one minute. So essentially, if I do this um, and I run this check, essentially it will keep pinging uh, this generic web application every minute to make sure that it's alive. And if it's down, you can actually send alerts to yourself like, hey, your application is down, do something about it. Yep. So if I test it, this should work. Oh, wait. Um, this shouldn't work because I didn't, I didn't, I put on the wrong port. Yeah, you can configure all your ports as well. So in our case, should be port 8888. Then you can like customize all your headers and everything. This should work. Okay, so that works. So that means if I save this, it will run every one minute, and then it will. That basically my application will be checked every one minute to make sure that it's alive. And if it's not alive, I can be alerted on it, which I can go in and then like, do stuff in order to make it alive again. That's one, um, uptime checks. Another interesting thing within this uh, site driver is this thing called um, alerting. So alerting um, is not your, like your typical um, like Prometheus alerts and that kind of stuff. Like alerting uh, over here, you can set your conditions, which is as usual. Like, you know, maybe you can set your, maybe if your matrix is too high or something, like just <coughs> configure it here. But, but the one that make it interesting is this part where you can send email and then you can like add documentation on what to do next. So let's say um, let's say if our condition here, if we put um, if memory consumption uh, memory is too high, then in our case, in our documentation, we can just say uh, restart application. You don't need to scale it or something like that. And then uh, if we save that, um, yeah, essentially when our application hits a high memory threshold, we'll get this email. Uh, then that kind of avoids the situation where the engineer on call, right, he won't know what to do, like, oh, okay, um, this service has high uh, memory workload, what am I supposed to do? Yeah, so if you get this email instead, like, okay, I know what to do next. So this kind of, uh, like, you can almost call it like a if shit happens playbook kind of thing. Okay, so that's monitoring. Um, so what are the services? We have... This other service, uh, other service which is kind of interesting, uh, which is the Stack Driver Profiler. So, for the Stack Driver Profiler, what we need to do um, in Golang's case is to just dump in this piece of Golang code, and then uh, the profiler should start and um, should gather uh, details about the app uh, application runtime. So, if we go here, Stack Driver go Profiler. Then um, our service is called external service, and then we put uh, version 0 0.01. And the profile time, CPU time, there's nothing shown because our our application is not CPU uh, bound. Like you know, it's 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 taking. There's nothing being computed here. There's nothing much being computed here. But if you check the heap, then you can probably see like okay, this. Uh, in your duration of seven days, uh, past seven days, right? This is kind of the profile of your application so far. Then from here, you can like do further analysis on it. Um, can't really explain here because I don't really know how to read this graph yet. Um, but yeah, like there's other kind of profiles, like you know, uh, allocated heap, threads, that kind of stuff. So yeah, so for those advanced users, um, after you check your memory, like okay, there's high memory usage. What to do next? Then you maybe you can come here to the profile. And if it's already running, let's say if it's a staging, uh, if this was on staging, then you can basically look at it and like, um, like take steps to like correct your situation. Okay, and then we have the last one, which is Stack Driver Debugger. Uh, Stack Driver Debugger is, um, 
it's another guy, kind of interesting service. Um, so for spec driver uh, debugger, um, first thing is to install the debugger agent. Debugger agent is dependent on language. So in Golang, um, you need to run this. Oh, okay, the command to install it is not here. But essentially for Golang, you have to install it via GoGet. And um, then after that, from there, you can uh, run your debugger agent. Uh, if it's other languages like Java or Python, maybe the uh, ways to use it is different. But in our case, let's say we're doing the demo uh, for our demo, which is uh, Golang. So this is the command. And then to run it, basically you call the Go, uh, Go Cloud debug agent. Um, source context is essentially um, the path, uh, the, the commit IDs to your, to your source repo. Uh, so basically, you, what you want to do, what you want to do with debugger, uh, okay, rather than uh, rather than me explaining, maybe I just show like what the tool does. Okay, debug. So in debugger, right? Um, essentially, what I can do is inject logs into a running application in order to understand more of it. So this is a running application, right? Um, so just now it's been running for quite a while. Um, and then let's say I'm trying to see whether my index handler is being hit in the first place. So maybe like I try to, uh, I try to hit and maybe it doesn't hit. So I, uh, maybe I want to try to understand it. So what I can do is I can inject this log point here. No, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I inject this uh, log point. We I put a war uh, warning. And essentially what it happens, uh, what happens is this log point gets injected into the running binary, and then if you try to ping it again, it's still pinging, right? Yeah. Okay. This is index handler. Yes. So if you try to con if you con if, if you ping it continuously, right? And then if you try to see the logs, then you can see that uh, these logs should come out. Hopefully. Okay. Uh, there you go. So these are the logs. So basically, on a running service, I didn't like deploy my my application again. What I did was I injected a log point, and then this log point gets like put into the binary, and then uh, now you can see like okay, this index handler, this portion of a code is actually being hit. Um, it's still kind of buggy. I couldn't get it to work to like show the value of variables. So maybe with time, it's, it will get more stable. Because now, right now, at least for Golang, it's in beta stage. Um, so maybe there are bugs that are being resolved right now. So, yep. So that's kind of it for the services that I kind of want to, want to uh, cover. So for more additional references, like uh, you can take a look at these links here. So the first link is essentially um, a series of YouTube videos about Googlers explaining the differences between SRE and DevSops, and uh, they have this interesting mantra where they were mentioning um, SRE is an implementation of DevOps. So if you're interested into, into that kind of thing, uh, you can take a look at that. Um, Codebase is there. Um, and then another one uh, of it is this Google Fluent the uh, GitHub repo. So let's say um, if you want to tweak around with um, the kinds of plugins that Fluent the uh, the Google Fluent D uh, provides by default. You might want to take a look at this repo and like uh, change it around from there. So that's kind of it. And uh, just a last side note: um, my company, Acronis, is hiring. So if you are, if Golang, if 